Today's video is entitled Simple Harmonic Motion Example Problems, and we are going to go over some example problems, actually six problems for oscillating springs. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, support my channel, click the Notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I've made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials that you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website, where you're looking for example problems, notes, practice problems, online simulations. You can find all of that. The link is in the description below. And of course, I made a bunch of other videos for this topic, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Now, as I said, we're going to go over six uh, example problems, we're going to start off with a little easier one and get a little harder as we go along. This first one says that in physics class, a student measures that it takes 18.1 seconds for an oscillating spring to complete 15 cycles. We want to know what is the period and what is the frequency. Now for this problem, we're going to kind of go over what is the definition of the period and the frequency because we're going to use those equations to solve this problem. Okay, the period T is the time for one cycle. The frequency f is the number of cycles per unit of time, which is generally one second, the base unit for time in the metric system. So we can just plug our values in for those two equations. The time is said is 18.1 seconds. The number of cycles is 15, and that you get that the period is 1.21 seconds for each cycle. Now, we usually don't write seconds per cycle. We just write seconds because that's the period is 1.21 seconds. Okay, down below here we have the frequency. We had 15 cycles in 18.1 seconds, and that means that we have a frequency of 0 0.83 hertz. The unit for frequency in the metric system is the hertz, or not is the hertz, but is hertz, and the number of cycles per second. So you can see one cycle takes more than one second, so we're going to have less than one cycle for each second. Okay. Number, oh yeah, we're going to check. You can see we also know that the period and the frequency are inversely proportional to each other. So we can just check if we get, if we just go right from here and use this equation to get the frequency because frequency is 1 over the period, we should get the same value. So it would be 1 divided by 1.21. And of course, you still get that the frequency is 0 0.83 hertz. That's just kind of a check you can do to see that you get the same value in both cases using different equations. Okay, now we're going to want to do number 2. Number two said, what is the period and frequency of an oscillating spring? And the spring constant K is equal to 10 newtons per minute. If you're not sure what the spring constant, of course, I have made a video for that topic also, and you can link to that in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But we have spring constant 10 is the spring constant newtons per meter, and we're going to put 200 grams, and that spring is going to be oscillating back and forth, and we want to know what is the frequency and what is the period. Okay, so we're going to do the period first. This is the equation that we use to calculate the period of a spring, a simple harmonic spring. It says that 2 pi times the square root of m, m is the mass, which we're given, and k is the spring constant. So we can just plug those values into there, and we get that 2 times pi times, now you got to make sure you convert the mass into kilograms, so it's 0 0.20 kilograms and divided by 10 newtons. Now 2.2 .2 divided by 10 is 0 0.02. Just look that uh, in between step there, and if you multiply all that out and take the square root, you get that the period is 0 0.89 seconds. And we can say use our relationship, as we said previously, that the frequency is inverse proportional to the period, so the frequency is 1 over the period. We know the period, and we can get that it's 1 over 0 0.89, and that's 1.3 hertz. All right, that is number, <clears throat> excuse me, that is number two. Now the next one is going to be a little harder. Oop! look, we have that cute little baby we have there. The child is bouncing in the bouncy swing, okay, and it's suspended from a spring. So these two are suspended from a spring. That's one in this picture is probably two springs, but you can get them with just one spring for this problem. It says if the spring stretches 15 centimeters, when we put the child in this bouncy seat, which is... Uh, the child is 8.5 kilograms. We want to know what is the spring constant and how much time does it take for the child to complete one bounce. 
Okay, now the spring constant we're going to get using Hooke's law. Hooke's law says that the force from the spring is equal to minus k, the spring constant, times x, the distance. Now, we're not given the force, but we're given the mass. We can calculate the force, and we are given the distance, 15 centimeters. So we're going to solve this for k. It's the force divided by the distance. And now the force we can get from the mass using Newton's second law, that the force is going to be the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to divide that by the distance. Now, once again, the distance has to be in meters, not centimeters. So you take 8.5 times 9.81. That gives you the force from the spring or the force on the spring, since we'll assume it's equal and opposite. And you divide that by the distance, and you get the spring constant is 556 newtons per meter. Okay, up here, a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton, and then we have meters down here. So now we can figure out the period because we've calculated the spring constant using the same equation, we're just going to do the same thing, plug the values in 8.5 divided by 556 5, is 0 .0, 0 0.015, and you multiply that out, take the square root, and you get that the period of that cute little boy, uh, maybe I'm not sure, uh, that cute little child is 0 0.78 seconds. That's number three. Now, we can do number four. Now, this one says an object at the end of the spring oscillates with a certain frequency, 3.25 hertz. We know the spring constant, or given the spring constant, we want to know what is the mass. So we're going to use the same equation, except we're not solving for the period this time, we're solving for the mass, and the mass is here under the square root on the top of this fraction here. We got to get the mass all by itself on the left-hand side. We got to get the mass out from underneath that square root. And how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do, I do, do a little algebra here to rearrange this equation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to square both sides of the equation. So if we square both sides, we get t squared on one side. Now when we square the other side, we got to square everything inside here. So t squared is t squared. Now when we square the inside here, we're going to get 2 times, 2 squared is 4, pi squared is pi squared. And then when we square this fraction that's under this radical, then those two are going to cancel, and we're just going to get 4, which is 2 squared, times pi squared, times m divided by k. All right, not m squared and k squared, because the m squared and the k squared would be, we have this, frac we have this radical here, so that cancels with the 2 squared. All right, so we don't square the m and the k. Now we can solve for, what are we trying to solve for? What is the mass? So how are we going to solve for the mass? Well, we're going to multiply both sides by k. That gives us t squared times k, then the k's cancel on the right-hand side, and we get 4 pi squared m. We want to solve for m, so we're going to divide by 4 pi squared, and then we're going to switch sides here. We get m equals t squared, the period squared, times k, divided by 4 pi squared. And we're going to go to the next slide, plug our values in, and we'll get the answer. Oh, yes, I have to remember here, we're given the frequency here. We don't know the period, so we got to calculate the period first. And remember, the period is 1 over the frequency because the frequency and the period are inversely proportional to each other. So the frequency is 1 over the period, and the period is 1 over the frequency. We're given the frequency, so therefore we can find the period. And that would be that the period is 1 over 3.25 hertz, and the period is therefore 0 0.31 seconds. So that goes into our equation right there. Don't forget to square the period. Multiply it by the spring constant, which we're given is 180 newton meters, divided by 4 pi squared, and you get the mass um, that would cause that oscillation with that spring is 0 0.44 kilograms, which maybe you could also write that as 440 grams. Okay? So in that problem, we were solving for the mass. Now in this next problem, we're going to be doing something very similar, except we're going to be solving for the spring constant. We've got to get the spring constant out of there. It's basically the same thing in the beginning and kind of the same thing all the way through. We're just going to square both sides. You get t squared, and then we get the squared and the radical cancel. And then we get 4 pi squared m over k. We want to solve for k. Now we could multiply by k and then divide by t squared, but if you remember, if you have a single value over here and down here in the denominator, you can just switch these two. Works out algebraically. 
the same thing. So we can just get that k, the spring constant, equal to 4 pi squared times m divided by the period squared. Okay, don't forget your squares. Uh, okay, and therefore we can just plug those values in. I don't think we have to convert anything this time. So it's just 4 pi squared times the mass, which is 1.5 kilograms, uh, which is divided by the period squared, which is 1.85 seconds. And you get that the spring constant is 17.3 newtons per meter. Okay, so it's good to know how to solve for those other two values besides just the period for the mass and the spring constant. That's how you do that in those last two. Now we have one last problem. Here we have a small bug which has a mass of 0 0.25 grams. It's caught in a spider's web. Now this is how spiders know whether there's something in the web or not by the frequency. And this bug is vibrating the web at a frequency of 4 hertz. And we want to know what is the spring constant for the web, okay? And we want to know what would the frequency be of the web if the bug had a larger mass, let's say 0 0.6 grams. Now, for the spring constant, we needed to know the force and the distance, okay? Now, we know the force because it's 0 0.5 gra 0 0.25 grams, but we don't know the distance. We can't calculate the spring constant that way, but we can use this equation... All right, and we're going to be also calculating the frequency, so we can you substitute this value for in here for t, and you can see that we get here that um, we have the frequency, therefore, it's equal to 1 over 2 times pi uh, multiplied by the square root, and now here it's m over k, and here it's k over m. We're taking basically the inverse okay, of the period equation, and the inverse period equation is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k divided by m. So now we're going to solve the same thing we did at the previous uh, slide where we solved for k, uh, and I'm not going to go through all the steps, because the steps are basically the same. Take the uh, squ square both sides, and then uh, solve for the value that you're looking for. So k actually turns out to be the frequency squared times 4 times pi squared times m. So we can just plug all those values in. If we solve this equation for k, then we get this. And we can plug those values in. 4 is the frequency. We have to square the frequency. That's 4 is 4. Pi is pi squared. Now this is 0 0.25 grams. We have to convert it into kilograms. So it's 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. And you get that k has a small value. It's just 0 0.16 newtons per meter. So that's k based on the information. Now we want to know what would the frequency be. We can use just use this equation now, the same equation. We know k. We can solve, substitute this in here for k, and we have a different mass, 0 0.6. So we're going to do that on this slide right here. Uh, we have our period equation, excuse me, our frequency equation. We know k was 0.16. And that's newton meter. And the mass, once again, has to be converted to kilograms. So it's 0 0.63. This is grams. So we have to put on here 10 to the minus 3 because there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. And you get that the new frequency, not 4 anymore, but it's just 2.6 hertz. So you increase the mass, and therefore you're going to be uh, decreasing the frequency like that. Okay. Okay, so there you go. That was six nice, very different example problems we did for oscillating springs. I hope you found the helpful video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my, actually it's five things now. Subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching.